So yesterday's AI forum got me thinking about AI regulation because all these big tech companies are scaling the most powerful new tool in the world and the US is trying to decide how best to moderate it. So last night I was out for a walk thinking about it and I lied down on the grass and looked up at the stars and that got me thinking about Mars. So now I was thinking about AI regulation and Mars. And as you might know, Starship, Elon Musk's rocket with SpaceX that is designed to fly to Mars, had its first test flight recently and it went really well. It got up into the atmosphere, but then what happened was a fire broke out. They lost control of the vehicle, so the Starship was not able to separate from the booster and they had to intentionally destroy the rocket to prevent any more damage to happen if it was to fall back down to Earth. So SpaceX released a report to the FAA with 63 corrective actions that they were going to take so that the second test flight goes better. And now they are just waiting for their launch permit. And that could happen any day now. And SpaceX is going to launch their second test flight imminently. If the second test flight is a success, we could be headed to Mars very shortly. And if you don't know, Elon Musk is planning on packing Starship full of Tesla's Optimus robots who will go to Mars and begin the early colonization process. These humanoid robots do not need oxygen. They have the best tools in the world. and they can look at the world through the cameras in their face and map it out and navigate it. But I think the most crucial aspect of the Tesla bot that is going to set it up for success on Mars is that they are equipped with a computer inside of them that can run the neural network without needing to be connected to the internet. We know this because Elon Musk on the FSD V12 live stream said that FSD does not need to be connected to the internet. And we know that Tesla has just taken the FSD software which teaches and trains the cars to look at the world and navigate through it. And they've just taken that and put it inside the computer that they use in their Tesla robots. This means that these robots can go to Mars and have artificial general intelligence for those several weeks that Tesla is back on Earth, gaining more video data, training the next software iteration. And then after a couple of weeks, while it's already been on Mars working, they can download the new software into the Tesla bot. And we know that you can download software from one planet to the other because NASA has been upgrading the software on their Curiosity rover that is already on Mars. Another thing that will set up the Tesla bot for success is that it is equipped with a massive battery pack that gives it 16 hours of charge time. These Tesla bots can work day and night and then they'll simply plug themselves in using the power generated by the solar panels that come with Starship. But unlike the Curiosity rover by NASA, Optimus is not curious. It is going to Mars on a dedicated mission to prepare a settlement that is ready for humans to come and join. The purpose of such a mission is so that in case anything happens to Earth, humans have a place to go. In order to make Mars habitable, Elon says that we might need to set off nuclear bombs in Mars's poles. This will heat up the planet and cause the ice to melt, which will then emit greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide and a natural greenhouse effect will start to occur. Mars will slowly start to resemble Earth as Mars is already the most comparable planet in the solar system to Earth. Elon has said he may want to be among the first voyagers to join the bots on Mars. But the AI forum got me thinking yesterday about how Mars is going to be regulated. Will Mars be owned by Tesla and SpaceX? I mean, Mars is going to be full of Tesla's robots and SpaceX will be the only company who's transporting people to Mars for a very long time, as there's absolutely no competition in sight outside of Blue Origin who won't be able to make it affordable for a very long time. I think from an objective point of view, yes, Mars will completely belong to SpaceX and Tesla. However, I fear that the USA is not going to like their biggest genius transporting himself and a bunch of resources to another planet that they have no control over. Throughout history, whoever gets somewhere first gets ownership of the land and they take control and they're only removed from it by force. So if Elon did go a little bit wonky and a little bit crazy and he told Earth that he is now taking control of Mars and it belonged to him and he was starting a new nation, luckily the US could easily cut off their transport line on Earth by taking over SpaceX headquarters and they could also prevent Tesla from furthering their software upgrades on the Tesla bots already present on Mars. This would definitely cut off Musk and leave him quite hopeless. Of course, I do not foresee Elon ever letting tensions rise with the US in this way, no matter how insecure they become. This is because Elon is not like other billionaires in my opinion. 
He is not going to Mars simply on a hunger for power or money. I think the best way to describe it is to fulfill a childlike dream. Walter Isaacson writes in his new biography that Musk was deeply into comics as a child. The single-minded passion of the superheroes impressed him. They're always trying to save the world with their underpants on the outside or these skin-tight iron suits, which is really pretty strange when you think about it, he says. But they are always trying to save the world. Well, as you know, Elon is a little strange too, and he's also trying to save the world. Did you think someone with ambitions of his size would just be a chill, normal dude? For Elon, getting to Mars is saving the world because if you look at history, every species of all time has had to face an extinction level event at some point. When Elon was a teen, he read a book series that simulated this exact mission of his. The author's name was Isaac Asimov, and the heroes in his books develop a plan to send settlers to distant regions of the galaxy to preserve human consciousness in the face of an impending dark age. More than 30 years later, and Musk is still tweeting about, you know, harnessing AI to work for us and to get to other sides of the galaxy. In one tweet, he highlighted a fundamental law of Asimov's books that will be at the forefront of SpaceX and Tesla's endeavors. It is called Zeroth's Law, and it reads that, Zeroth's law is the first thing that should be programmed into an AI robot. It means a robot may not harm humanity or through inaction allow humanity to come to harm. You can see how these science fiction books influenced Musk's mission in life. But I do not think Musk is going to stop at Mars. In Musk's favorite book, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, protagonist Arthur Dent is rescued by a passing spaceship seconds before the Earth is destroyed by an alien civilization that is building a hyperspace highway. The denizens of the galaxy are trying to figure out the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe and everything. They build a supercomputer that after 7 million years spurts out the answer, 42. When that provokes a befuddled howl, the computer replies, that quite definitely is the answer. I think the problem, to be quite honest with you, is that you've never known what the question is. That lesson stuck with Musk. He said, I took from the book that we need to extend the scope of human consciousness so that we are better able to ask the questions about the answer, which is the universe. After colonizing Mars, I do not think Musk's risk-taking tendencies are simply going to stop. He's going to set his sights on intergalaxy travel. He's probably gonna start engineering towards traveling at light speed. Or he might think more about setting a spaceship off in the direction of where he wants to go. And however long that might take, he might start thinking about how to preserve the human body amidst the travel and how to prevent aging while you are getting to the next place that you want to go. I'm thinking interstellar in that scene where they come out of those super cold coffins or whatever those are and they haven't aged at all. With all that being said, I think that Elon Musk will plant the American flag on Mars and I do not think he's going to go rogue and set up some kind of new nation. I think it's just unfeasible and it would cause too much fuss. And if you have not got your biography on Walter Isaacson, I will put a link in the description. Thank you for watching today's report and have a good day.